I V M. to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories, India's very own travel podcast, where each week we share the journey of travellers in their own words and relive their experiences with you, our listeners. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories. Hope you're all well and keeping safe. On the podcast today, we speak with Ananya Vats, a product manager at Google Maps and an avid traveller as she takes us to the queen of hill stations, as this place is popular and known. So let's hop onto the episode and find out more. So with that introduction, we'd love to welcome Ananya Watts, a product manager and a traveler to the Musafir Stories. Ananya, thank you so much for being on the Musafir Stories and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm pretty excited to be here. Well, thank you, Ananya. Thank you for reaching out, and we're glad to host you on the podcast today. Uh, but the intro I uh, did earlier was uh, pretty short and concise. So why don't you speak a little bit more about yourself and your likes? Sure, sure. So currently, I'm based in Bangalore. It's been a couple of years here, and I'm a product manager at Google Maps. Apart from that, I love to read. I do write, do a couple of art forms also. And of course, I travel. Uh, actually, pandemic has been... a uh, quite a pivotal moment because I started doing a lot of long travels and solo vacations. So over the past four years, I've been to uh, around 20 Indian states. I've traveled uh, 18 countries and I managed the all the trips with a full-time job. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of sort of travel planning and researching that goes into it. Um, yeah, I think that's about me. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. And I'm sure uh, your job also acts as a welcome distraction looking at maps all day you tend to get distracted i'm just joking but uh, i could uh, help but bring up that you work at google maps so i always love just looking at maps and zooming in and zooming out of places uh, trying to figure out where or what orientation uh, some places are but yeah the, clearly you're very very multi-talented and i'm glad that um, the silver lining of the pandemic, which is a difficult time for all of us, uh, has been that you've been able to um, focus a lot more on travel and discover new places and countries. Um, I don't know, uh, you mentioned you've heard of the uh, podcast before, so you kind of know the drill, uh, right? We basically focus on a place, the experience of visiting there, uh, things to do, see, experience, eat, uh, meet, Right, all of that. So with that in mind, where are you taking us and our listeners to today? Sure, yeah. So um, I'm basically taking to a really, really beautiful place near Bangalore. It's famous for its flowers and greeneries and mountains. We're going to Kodai Canal. It's clearly my favorite for a weekend trip from Bangalore. Uh, Like it's something which could be covered in a short number of days. And then you kind of get the best of nature. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we used to boast about Bangalore having good weather, but um, I know these days uh, Bangalore also gets pretty hot. So yeah, it's a perfect getaway for a weekend because Kura has usually good weather uh, around the year or at least cooler weather around the year. Uh, so I'm glad that you uh, did get a chance to experience the hill station, also referred to as the Princess of Hills, right? Uh, can you tell a little bit more about how to get there and when is a good time to visit? Sure, sure. So uh, the best time to go is obviously monsoons, like everything is super green and you see like mist on the roads. It's quite dreamy. Uh, and I think that's kind of applicable for whole South India. But then it's also pretty nice in winters. I personally have visited twice, uh, once in May when it was very green and once in March when I would not recommend anyone to go like before monsoons because <laughs> almost, you know, uh, it's quite dry and you mm. see half the beauty that Kodai Canal has. So uh, I would say monsoons, autumn, winters would be the best time. Uh, it's quite uh, close to Bangalore, as I mentioned. So you can take like an overnight bus or you can even drive down. It takes around eight to nine hours. Um, you can go on bike also, if you know, because the mountains are really nice. Um, 
and uh, apart from that there are airports like madurai coimbatore uh, nearby so in case you are coming from other places from there you can take a cab and reach kodai yeah brilliant firstly thank you for uh, setting that um, geographical orientation for us as well as um, how and when to visit right that part of it um, can you also shed some light just in terms of um, the cell station how it came about uh, like the history attached to it Sure, sure. So, uh, like a lot of hill stations, I think Ooty is also one of them. Uh, this was basically set up by Britishers who were looking to, you know, escape to a more cooler place. And at that time, mostly Mysore was the center, which was quite hot. So, Kodai Canal was established by uh, Britishers around eighteen hundreds, and that is something that you can even see now in all the old buildings, the architecture. It's very colonial in nature. Even the names of places, like the famous, uh, you know, spot. Spots in Kodai Canal have the whole, uh, you know, uh, colonial uh, nomenclature to it. Um, it also kind of ensures that it's very well planned in the sense that it's quite green. There are lots of gardens and flowers, which is my favorite part of the <laughs> Kodai Canal. Mm-hmm. Actually, the sheer amount of flowers and colors mm-hmm. that you see there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in even in literal terms, the term Kodai Canal in Tamil. means the gift of the forest right right loosely translates to that so yeah it's very lush green and um as a part of the nilgiri ranges so uh, really really some beautiful and scenic sights along with the good weather to experience while you're visiting here um now you didn't mention about the british connection so thank you for covering off that too so we know what to expect uh in terms of the itinerary itself um you did mention that it's a good we can tap for get away and even historically it's been like um i don't know from my from the times of uh, times of my parents and that generation like a honeymoon destination right that's how it's been considered but uh in your case how long was your itinerary for yes so it was actually a little spontaneous uh mm-hmm. i went for a long weekend which is 3 days with my friends um and we uh, like went by bus and we were supposed to return on monday but then i really liked the place and i had my laptop with me so i just extended mm. my stay till sunday um <laughs> and i took a hostel and i stayed there <laughs> my friends actually came back but uh, since i had the remote work option uh, i stretched my visit and like just stayed there um, but i think uh, could i can all in general could be covered properly in 3 days um mm-hmm. but then as they say you know <laughs> if you really want to experience a place uh, even a month is a short time to uh, visit so you can stay for as long as you want <laughs> yeah absolutely and god bless those companies that give that bit of freedom to work remotely so that um, there is flexibility around planning our tours as well um Wonderful. So let's jump into your itinerary itself and uh, see the type of things and places um, and experiences you had. Uh, where do you want to kick this off with, just in terms of uh, taking us around? I'll start with the first three-day uh, trip, which was well planned by mm-hmm. me and my friends. Uh, we actually stayed at a place called Vatta Canal. It's mm-hmm. a couple of kilometers apart from the Kodai Canal main city. and uh, the main reason uh, to choose vatta canal was the greenery because you're kind of in the middle of the hills uh it's again very accessible from the bus station you can just take an auto and reach it um and vatta canal has this uh, really famous uh, point which is called dolphin's nose uh it's actually a short trek of around 1 one, one and a half hours each and uh, it's very pretty like as i said uh, there's greenery all around it's not that difficult so that is where we started so we reached uh, around early morning we uh, went to our stay we kept our bags and then we went for the trek straight away uh, we had a lot of fun came back and there's this cafe called altaf's cafe it's right at the start of the dolphin's nose uh, very nice views great food so we just had a uh, lunch there and then we went around and walked to explore some of the famous uh, view points and uh, waterfalls so if you are uh, 
you know new to the place there are a plenty of cab services available which cover a certain number of points uh, it's one of the easiest way to explore the town because they would have like you know uh, the village tour or the waterfall tours and all and you can actually uh, discuss the places that you want to visit and they'll cover that in a day or half a day depending on how much time do you have so we did that but uh, you can also do that by yourself like if you have your own car or bike uh, you know you can take that and explore the places a lot of them are within a certain route so it could take like certain number of hours uh, but yeah that that's like one of a good option that's available in kodai yeah for sure and um, i'm assuming you took the the former right you basically hired a cab for uh, the period is that is that what you did yes yes so uh, for the first day we took a half a day tour so we took a cab driver and he basically uh, showed us some waterfalls which were near the vata canal so there was this silver cascade waterfall and i think beer shola waterfall uh, we visited those waterfalls and then uh, we came back because again it was the first day we just wanted to relax a little the second day we had a full uh, day tour which covered the main uh, manavanur lake the pombrai village view points the pine forest uh, so we basically uh, again we can spend as much time as we want at each place it's quite flexible so uh we ended up spending a lot of time in manavur lake it's it's one of my i would say favorite places in this uh town uh there's also like a coracle boat ride that you can go and you can just sit around the lake and just enjoy the peace i don't know if it was lack of tourist season but we had the lake almost to ourselves so it was quite a nice sunset that we watched and we just chilled around the lake and then it was like a full day uh, cap thing that we took and then we came back to our stay okay yeah let's just uh, touch on a couple of those points as well uh, right the uh, starting with the manavar nur lake that you mentioned um uh, this seems to be a little bit away from the city right it's, it's not necessarily um exactly in pondi right uh, at least that's what i came across oh uh, yes it's a little away from the main uh, center of kodai Yeah. so that is why uh, i uh, basically talked about the cab service so what they yeah. do is the they basically do all the points which are close to each other together so manavur lake also has another lake in front which is called kukul lake and they're all mm. a couple of hours away from the city center so basically when you start from kodai canal uh, city center and the city center is very easy to understand there's a kodai lake which is a yep. star shaped lake that's the center of the kodai canal so you start from there and then you move in a certain direction and there are uh, points on the way so for us it was pombrai village point which is basically a very colorful village you see it from you can click pictures and all then we went to the lake view point uh lake view point is an, another place at the top from there you can obviously see the lake but also the greenery all around and then we drove down to the lake itself Uh, after that there was the kukul lake which is a little ahead of the lake and then we returned back to kodai so these all the places and pine forest was also on the way um so these are the places which were kind of clubbed together um and then if you want to visit the city there's like another two because that's like in a different direction yeah um yeah but like you mentioned the manavanur lake is uh, very very uh, picturesque and pristine and uh, i'm glad that you one got to do the coracle of the boat ride and um, you also had it pretty much for yourself right given the time of the year you were visiting so that's great but i also read that there's other options in case somebody's interested in zip lining i don't know if those are open around the year but uh, there's definitely options around there and uh, this other lake right kukul <clears throat> like um again probably something that depends on uh, when you're visiting but uh, it has like a beautiful spread of water lilies across so that way that lake too it's probably a little more uh, off beat compared to the manavanur lake uh, but definitely something worthwhile and uh, something you could visit um and a couple of other places you mentioned right um even the pine forest this is a very very popular um, and i would say a very touristy spot because pretty much everybody makes a spot here and it's been a part of a lot of the 
movie shooting lo- movie locations as well right like a lot of movies to uh, get to ten uh, or tend to be shot here so uh, very likely that you won't miss out on this and especially if you're taking one of these uh, uh, packages for a day like a cab taking you around for a day it's one of the spots that will definitely uh, be on the on the itinerary uh, so i'm glad that you got to enjoy all of these and uh, Given that it's also the right time of the year, that everything is nice and green, um, I'm sure uh, everything was just amplified in terms of beauty. Um, and uh, I just want to yes, go back yes. to the first point as well. You mentioned uh, where you started off your, um, your your trip with the dolphin snows, right? Uh, it's a little, uh, it's a small hike, right? Uh, if I'm not wrong, Ananya, from like whatever the trail point or the trailhead you begin, there's a little hike to reach to this um, basically hill uh, top, you could say, that's in the shape of a dolphin's nose, correct? Yes, yes. So it's around one, one and a half hours, one side. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we actually stayed very close to dolphin's nose. So it's mm-hmm. in Butter Canal only. And our stay was like right across the road from where the trek started uh so that's that is why it was the first thing we did and quite nice like uh you know you get a lot of uh again most of the hikes are nice because you know you're surrounded by trees on all sides um but it's also like in terms of well worth the you know amount of time you spend Uh, it's prettier in peak monsoons uh that's what i heard but again even during may june it's very nice yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's um, not a very strenuous trek. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely doable. Yes, yes, it's definitely doable. Also, there are a lot of Maggie and tea points along the way. So you can, uh, it's quite commercial. It's not like an offbeat thing at all. Uh, but that mm-hmm. does not take away the beauty of the place. Uh, so you can, you know, stop and have Maggie tea. So we, because we just came uh, like from an overnight bus, we actually stopped for breakfast. Like we had uh, Maggie and tea on the way and then we moved ahead. So you can definitely, you know, take pauses and even people with, you know, who are not very fit can actually do this trek. Um, It's not, uh, you know, strenuous at all. Okay, yeah. Um, Wonderful glad that this is um, very accessible and doable. So great way to kick off your... uh, day and um, also can you talk a little bit more about the waterfalls that you made stops at uh, which ones were these again and uh, like what type of were they like unique in their own sense or were they more uh, similar to each other can you speak a little bit to those please yes so uh, because it was not monsoons the waterfalls were actually not very full Mm -hmm. Um, so one was the beer shola waterfall which is basically uh, so it was supposed to be a really really uh you know high volume waterfall but what we saw was kind of like a stream and mm-hmm. the second one was silver cascade as the name says it was basically a layered waterfall so uh it did look pretty uh but again i would recommend to uh keep waterfalls as a highlight if you visit in monsoons and otherwise there are other places that you can spend you know more time on so for us waterfalls was not the highlight of the trip um, yeah, apart from that, okay. I think there, there were other way prettier places, but it totally okay. depends on the time that you visit. Okay. And uh, there's also this other, I don't know if it's the Silver Cascade or something close by, the Pumber Waterfalls or uh, the Little Falls, like they refer to, right? It became really popular after uh, Little shot one of their um, ads featuring the models uh, and their f- famous little theme song, right? Uh, or the... I guess this is the jingle or whatever that is called. Uh, they shot that and since then it's been very popular. So it's likely that um, if you're visiting and especially if you're taking you know, these cab rides, they'll take you to those depending on the time of the year. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> given the hills and how scenic these Western Ghats are, waterfalls are definitely uh, part of, of the uh, overall places that you do come across and there's so many of them that are unnamed as well i'm sure but some of the popular ones um and you already mentioned here you could definitely make sure to uh, cover those off as well given the time of the year you're visiting right uh, some of them are very beautiful and cascading so uh, make sure to visit here as well uh, but yeah it looks like a 
pretty packed start to the itinerary. You uh, start off with a hike to the uh, to the, the to the dolphin's nose, uh, which in itself is uh, I think it'll take a little bit of time, right? If it's especially an hour, hour and a half each way. Um, and you also covered off uh, other places like the Manavanur Lake, uh, the Kukul Lake. Uh, and uh, what was the village viewpoint? Or the, was that the sorry village viewpoint or the lake viewpoint that you so, mentioned? Anya? Yeah, it's the Pombrai village viewpoint. So Pombrai is a colorful village. So the basically houses are of different color. And when you look from top, it looks really beautiful because it's surrounded by all the greenery. And then you have those little colorful villages. Uh, now they also have a really nice zostel in the with the Pombrai village viewpoint. So I would definitely want to kind of you know revisit the place. But what we did was we basically stopped at the viewpoint and we clicked pictures. Uh, it's it's a really nice place to just you know stop for a while and look. Okay, yeah, I did see that this is one of the upcoming places to like. And not for somebody not preferring to be in the midst of um, the city itself, right? It can be pretty crowded, and especially if it's a touristy season, it can be uh, uh, like a lot of people visiting. Uh, so, so Pumbrai or Pombrai, uh, I mean, I'm not very uh, um, familiar with the pronunciation, but uh, this is a village that has um, a few good options to stay and also is a little cut off, so that way you don't necessarily see the same sort of. Uh, tourist inflow, although it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, and yeah, like Ananya mentioned, uh, the view of the village is what uh, is one of the big takeaways here. Uh, it's a beautiful view, especially from up top from that uh, viewpoint that Ananya is mentioning. If you look at it, it's a lot of uh, old um, sloped tile houses, right? Uh, so colorful houses and uh, you could get a good view of that surrounded by a lot of these paddy or paddy fields or whatever the uh, farming uh, is done around so it's it's really a brilliant view to um, just look and appreciate um, and I understand Devin I don't know if you had a chance to go into the village um, Ananya or was it more around the viewpoint that you spent time at we just saw the viewpoint uh, I think so village was basically not the part of the package but it is right. possible to go to the village uh, I don't think they have stay options or uh, mm -hmm. might have changed in like the last year or so. But you can still like visit the village if you want. There were also some temples on the way, which right. our cab driver told us about. So that's also like one option that could be explored. So Pombrai village point is basically on the way from mm -hmm. Kodai Canal city to the Manavanur Lake. So yeah. you would kind of have that on the way itself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, if it's of interest, you could definitely uh, make a stopover or if you're by, traveling by yourself, you could perhaps venture a little bit into the village as well. Uh, here, uh, it's probably the same temple that uh, you made reference to. It's called the Kolantai Velapar Temple. It's apparently very popular in the region and um, very revered. And then um, I also hear the garlic from this village is very, very popular. So yeah, if something you're looking to pick up as well when you're visiting, uh, that might be one of the things. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, just the view of the village itself is the main takeaway. And uh, especially if you're traveling onto Manavanur Lake, make sure to uh, take a quick pit stop here. Um, awesome. So given that almost like this part of the circuit right you have covered and uh, was this in the first day and a half or first couple of days or was it mostly the first day uh, first two days first two days right so the first day it was the dolphin snows and the waterfalls and second mm -hmm. day we did the viewpoint and the lake okay brilliant um so we're next to ananya once you've uh, covered off like this circuit which is mostly to the west i believe from the city uh, but yeah once you've covered the circuit yes. uh where are you headed to uh, the third day we actually wanted to take it a little light um, so we mostly explored the city itself um, there's this really beautiful walkway which is called Coker's Walk uh, it is a little crowded but it's still very pretty uh, so you can you know go either early morning or in the evening during sunset and Coker's Walk is constructed at, like so there's basically a path and on the other side, it's just hills. So there's obviously a railing so that nobody falls off. 
but you can see clouds floating by and it's a beautiful view it's around a kilometer or so uh, the stretch mm-hmm. and on the other side they have shops so the shops could be you know selling uh, jewelry or little soft toys or even some uh, food stalls uh so those shops are uh, usually by localized they have their own timings but the walk itself is very pretty i actually went for coco's walk thrice <laughs> so mm. i went for the first time with my friends and then when i extended i went like for two more times just showing people around and like it's really peaceful and really nice in the mornings so we did that um after that we did uh, the byron park it's a park in the middle of the city it's very uh, well maintained there's a lot of local people in the park who are just you know walking around there were also kids who were just playing or practicing some you know different gymnastics and stuff it was quite interesting um, and a good place to just you know be in the nature and like read or something so we spend uh, some part of the afternoon there then we went to uh, guna caves so guna caves is something which is recently it's kind of come again into like news there's this movie which got released uh, which is called majumal boys and i actually went to watch it because you know guna caves were featured in the movie uh, so they have this uh, you know uh, cavity or uh, basically a hole which is called devil's kitchen and nobody knows the bottom of the hole uh, so majumal boys is inspired by a real story of a couple of uh, you know malayali boys going on a trip and then uh, one of them actually falls in the devil's kitchen hole and how they rescue him which was a uh, almost impossible mission so although tourists are not allowed to go and see that uh, we can go till a certain point of the caves so that's what we did and yeah. uh, then there's this another view point which is called pillar rock which we saw so the last day of our trip uh, or suppose so last day uh, we basically covered these view, po- view points and we explored some of the food places and it was a uh, more on the lighter side yeah yeah uh, manjumal boys right like you mentioned it was uh, released very recently a 2024 movie and a malayalam movie so if somebody's looking to catch up on it definitely uh, you will get a good sense of uh, because a lot of the shooting locations are in kodaikanal uh, and it's based off of a true story uh, i don't know if you just mentioned that but uh, this happened i don't know sometime in um, the early 2000s i think where a group of friends went there and one of them actually fell into that uh, yeah whole or a natural cave formation and um and this this basically uh, the guna caves or the uh, devil's kitchen that you're mentioning right this is the space or the natural cave formation between these pillar rocks that you're mentioning right uh, the viewpoint and those by the way are also just absolutely stunning right it uh, feels like it's one of uh, from one of those um, hollywood movie locations where i don't know avatar or whatever you shoot right it's a really lock uh, like a cylindrical pillar type formations and uh, like a space between them kind of goes down a uh, natural cave formation is formed and uh, the name also the original name given to it by the britishers i understand was like devil's kitchen and then a movie called as guna was shot there in 1991 featuring kamal hasan and then uh, they became popular as guna caves and now manjumal boys basically uh, is another movie shot at the same location covering a, a, like a real life uh, event that happened where a group of uh, friends go there one of them falls down and then there's a Uh, rescue operation that happens and it's, it's a really nice movie i've seen the movie too it's uh, i think edge of your seat thriller type of a movie so if you if you haven't checked it out it's uh, another way of getting a glimpse of not just guna caves but also of uh, some spots in kodaikanal um, right so i'm glad that you got to visit these spots as well overall yeah it's just a good space to visit and even guna caves right you don't even have to go too deep into the caves like just the approach to it like those trees and their Uh, really interlocking root system or whatever that is right tananya i don't know if you came across all of those points um it's it's pretty interesting um to visit even just beyond the caves yes yes for sure it's it's beautiful and even the pillar rock view point which is quite uh, nearby it's also really pretty uh that like you can just stop and stare at that for a while uh yeah. so i didn't obviously see the movie at that uh, that time 
but uh, yeah it was quite an experience and i loved the movie uh, it was quite thrilling and also just you know having been in those places made it even yeah. more special for me yeah yeah i'm sure uh, so i'm glad that you got a uh, visit and enjoy some of these experiences as well um, and the other couple of places you mentioned right the coco's walk and the bryant park <clears throat> both of them have been basically named after some of the British officers who uh, basically led the way and either setting them up or um, establishing them. Uh, the Cocos work, <clears throat> especially from a viewpoints perspective, it's brilliant. I mean, obviously, you have the full length of the place to walk about, which is like almost a kilometer that you mentioned. But uh, even just some of the views you get from there, um, it's just... Uh, absolutely breathtaking uh, right and uh, uh, that's something I would definitely encourage you to visit as well um, uh, given given the wonderful walks and uh, on a good day you can catch a lot of the places like dolphin snows and some of the other close by uh, viewpoints from from this from um, this place from the Cocos walk so something to uh, definitely try out and uh, your um, Bryant Park is more on the lines of, um, if you visited Uti, right, the botanical gardens and stuff like that, it's very similar to that with uh, a lot of uh, species or varieties of uh, trees and flowers and plants. So uh, that's also another just relaxing experience for um, some, if you're just looking to get around and explore the, the trees and the plants of the place. Um, I think you've covered a bunch of things. Uh, did you also want to touch upon, uh, again, this is still your original planned itinerary, right? Anything else did, uh, that you did touch upon during this time you want to cover off now, Ananya? Uh, we did go shopping and that was towards the end. So basically my friends then took a bus and went and I mm. moved on to another hostel. Uh, but okay. yeah, I think Kutai itself has a really, uh, you know, famous spices and chocolates and the chocolates are really nice. So you mm -hmm. can just go and like try a bunch of chocolates. Uh, they're also very cheap uh, for the, you know, quality and the taste. So we basically roamed around the market. Uh, the market was mainly around Kodai Lake. So Kodai mm -hmm. Lake is nice, uh, not as I would say you know, green and isolated as the lakes that I mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it's still like good for boating and all around the lake. Uh, I think two sides of the lake, there's this huge market that you can just walk around. Uh, there are shops selling all sorts of things. But the town is mainly famous for its spices and chocolates. So we got a bunch of that. And then I uh, basically, you know, uh, my friend, I bid farewell to my friends who took the bus uh, and then I moved to another place. Um, the city also, although it's quite crowded and there's a lot of, say, traffic jam around it, it also has a bunch of nice uh, cafes and restaurants. So we explored mm -hmm. some of those okay. um, and you would definitely kind of find good food um, in Kodai and like even if, so I'm a vegetarian, so even for vegetarians, there are plenty of good options. Um, it is uh, like usually, you know, smaller towns, there's an issue of, you know, getting good places. So Kodai Canal does not have that issue. There are plenty of options for whatever you want to do. So there's like Abbey's Cafe, which has burgers and shakes. Um, there was this Nia Streets that we went to. Um, then for South Indian, we went to this place. Uh, it's called Astoria. It's a huge uh, sort of uh, place where, you know, you get those different style meals. And mm -hmm. uh, it was quite tasty. So uh, we explored a bunch of those. I actually came from, because I was staying for like four or five more days, I came down to Kodai again to just try some of these places again and have food. Yeah, absolutely. No <clears throat> dearth of options, for, especially from a food perspective. Um, and even the cafe you mentioned earlier, right? That's by Dolphin's Nose. Um, Altaf's Cafe, right? Altaf's Cafe, also, yeah. Yeah, very, very popular, especially for your uh, Mediterranean cuisine and burgers and falafels and the like and sandwiches. Um, uh, I mean, while looking up uh, for this episode, I came across, uh, like, it also has a very interesting uh, background of the owner, right, who set it up. He basically uh, was a chap from uh, Shimoga in Karnataka and he, um, like, left, 
home at a very early age and he came across these uh, Israeli tourists, right? A lot of Israeli tourists visit India every year and he ran into them and he traveled a bunch of places with them uh, in the north and Himachal and all of that. And finally, he decided to settle back down closer to home and set up a cafe. So a lot of the offerings are uh, the, the Mediterranean or falafel type of offerings are uh, basically inspired by those travels. So... Uh, pretty interesting um, and yeah like a um, very popular cafe right if you're in that region or uh, in Vata Canal you're very likely going to visit or uh, run into this or have somebody recommend you Altaf's cafe so make sure you visit there as well uh, but yeah the bottom line is uh, in terms of food options it's definitely uh, quite a popular hub so there's no dearth of uh, types of food uh, or cuisine available um, so you could certainly uh, rest assured <laughs> not worry too much about the food options um, and yeah tell us a little bit more about um, the extended itinerary now right uh, beyond the let's say the touristy circuit most most people do cover off this right uh, the, the some of the points you mentioned earlier plus the points in and around the city like the Kodai, Lake, Kodai Canal Lake etc um, where did you move to from here and uh, also please share with us what kind of um, experiences you had here. Sure, sure. So uh, Kodai Canal in general has a bunch of hostels and also like good uh, homestays, Airbnbs. And uh, my recommendation in general is to stay a little far from the city center, uh, especially in places like Uti Kodai, which was like constructed thinking a very small sort of, you know, area in mind. So um, I stayed around four or five kilometers away from the city center in a hostel. Uh, it was at top of a hill. So the views were really nice. And because I was staying alone, so like I prefer hostels because you get to meet other people. Uh, mm -hmm. Although I did not travel that much in the extended stay, uh, it was mainly walks around the hostel in the evening. And then I had office work uh, from morning till evening mm. so uh, <laughs> mostly I was working and you know uh, having conversations with people so I met a bunch of really interesting people so could I can that's when I came to know that it's famous among the bikers because they were like biking groups who were coming there and staying for like one night two nights and uh, those conversations were really interesting um, during the next weekend so I was supposed to come back by a bus but because mm -hmm. I made so many friends in the hostel itself i actually you know uh, came back with those people in their car <laughs> so we oh, drove okay. back to bangalore uh, and uh, i would uh, so i did come to the town twice during my stay there uh, it was only possible twice because i had like office work and again i just wanted to relax and not like explore the places so as i mentioned i did coker's walk again uh, mm -hmm. The first time we went, we went in the evening, so it was quite a busy time with like all the shops open. The second time I uh, did like a morning uh, walk where the shops were still to open, so it was very peaceful and again like prettier. Uh, I also did Byron Park basically uh, when I came to the town and mainly explored the food scenes and the shopping scenes. So it's also famous for its woodwork, so we got some bunch of small you know souvenirs which were for our home or you know friends and there was this place called cloud street uh, i don't know if it's still open or uh, so it was famous for its sizzlers and mm -hmm. we tried sizzlers um, again like a bunch of friends which were just newly made so we we just kept on exploring random things and it, i came back on the sunday basically okay yeah so guys Remote work is actually real work also and doesn't mean that just because you're working remotely you can spend the whole day uh, going around and then pretend that you're still online. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, so at least this gave you an opportunity to also meet new people and then revisit some of the places too, right, that you liked and uh, also explore some of these food places and uh, uh, yeah, if you're looking to pick something up back, I mean, usually with uh, a lot of these hill stations, you do have, you know, they call them homemade chocolate, but yeah, whatever that is, but uh, it is uh, usually uh, a selling point of these 
places that they have a lot of uh, really delicious chocolate on sale so make sure you grab some of them and and spices as well like um i mentioned earlier um overall it does seem like a very relaxing um trip right and uh, even in terms of experiences there's everything from if you're looking at uh, something more uh, adventurous like you're hiking or boating or other things like zip lining etc you have those options um, other options primarily around nature right your waterfalls your lakes uh, your viewpoints and everything um, and if you want to uh, just spend time doing nothing and just uh, take it easy uh, the best would be to like move uh, someplace a little bit cut off or offbeat or far away from the city center uh, and like choose to stay at a hostel or someplace like that and you could almost turn this into a vocation type of uh, experience right so all of those different um, options are available while you're uh, visiting Kodai Canal. <clears throat> Another thing I, I don't know probably shouldn't mention but I'll mention it anyway it's also infamous for uh, or used to be infamous for uh, shrooms or mushrooms as they were referred to i won't get into the specifics because i don't want to get into trouble but uh, i hear a lot of uh, fake uh, uh, like sellers show up that uh, pretend to uh, sell these to you as well it's best to stay off of those things as well because uh, really you don't need <laughs> things like these to enjoy kodai canal in the first place uh, but yeah overall uh, Definitely a lot of options for uh, one to explore. I don't know anything else that we did not touch upon or um, things you'd like to mention that people could consider? Yeah, so I think uh, during the stay, that extended stay basically, uh, my highlight was just the walks that I took, uh, you know, just wandering around the nature looking at the flowers and all and in general uh, because Kodai Canal is also like plagued by over tourism like a lot of cities a lot of small towns um, but what I really liked about the place uh, was the overall uh, awareness about the environment that was there um, so basically you know there's this newspaper called Kodai Chronicle uh, it's widely circulated which mm -hmm. brings uh, for the issues that the town is facing they have a really good uh, you know uh, garbage maintenance policy so you know you don't get those small water bottles or the one liter bottles you have to buy either a five liter bottle or you carry your own like you know uh, water bottles so i think in general they are doing a lot and that's commendable because I've not seen that happening in North. So I've also traveled to other hill stations and, you know, I really like that. But there's also a lot more to be done. So at the time I was traveling, there was this talks of, you know, uh, construction on Kodai Lake. And mm -hmm. the citizens are so aware, they're protesting against that. And the newsletter that I just mentioned had, you know, interviews and actual, you know, campaigns against it. So um, it didn't actually happen as far as I know. But uh, it was quite interesting aspect and I think because I stayed for a longer period of time, I got to see those side of things and, you know, talk to a lot of localites that how much they appreciate, you know, the nature around them and uh, how the construction should be more mindful. So they're taking concrete steps to kind of make sure that's the case. I think that is also a big takeaway from my Kodai Canal visit that we should be very mindful as travelers and uh, you know we should not litter the place we should not damage it and if possible leave it better than you know when we came to that place yeah yeah absolutely because it is uh, unfortunately a reality right over tourism will happen given people have more and more uh, disposable income dispensable income dispensable i guess but uh, uh, yeah either way uh, uh, people will travel more and more and uh, it's hard to stop that but probably what's more achievable is uh, spreading awareness and being conscious of uh, the choices you make when traveling so to such places right and uh, thank you for calling that point out as well because uh, places like these are definitely at the um, mercy of tourists 
uh, doing their own bit, in a, given that how many of them are visiting, it's uh, definitely not something that can be um, solely taken up by locals or governments or whoever's in charge. It has to uh, come from the tourists themselves too. So uh, glad that you made that call out and it's important for us to uh, save and preserve places like these for uh, future generations and that can only happen um, if we are spreading awareness about these things. And I'm glad that uh, even local um, initiatives and papers like the, or um, yeah, I think it's more digital or I don't know if uh, they do a uh, print as well, but uh, yeah, Kodai Chronicle is one of them and it has a variety of uh, such interviews and topics it covers about Kodai Canal. Uh, so definitely check that out too if you're uh, looking into some of the histories and backstories of the place. Uh, thank you so much for uh, covering off all of these beautiful things. A couple of other interesting points I came across too when I was doing my research and um, I don't know if you came across them. Uh, one of them was um, this place called as the Kodai Canal. Um, let me get the right name for it. Uh, it was called as the Kodai Canal Solar Observatory, um, right? So that was also believed to be like a 130-year-old uh, solar observatory that was set up to uh, basically do a lot more research around the um, sun and its implications on the climate and other events happening. And um, even it was set up uh, after the events of, I think, uh, sometime in the 1800s, there was like a, a great famine that happened in the region. And um, as a reaction to that, um, like initiative was taken up to uh, research more into what can we find out based off of the activity on the on the on the sun and uh, there's a bunch of things especially for somebody who's interested in astronomy astrophysics those types of things you could visit there's a museum as well i believe um so that's something i found interesting that uh, one could definitely uh, if you have time and uh, space on your itinerary you could certainly cover something off like that too uh, but yeah i think ananya did a brilliant job of actually giving us a good holistic view of um, what an experience in Kodai Canal can be like. Uh, in terms of um, keeping up with your travels and um, other activities, uh, is there some place you uh, log all of these, Ananya, that people could follow your work on? It's not very structured because there's always other things getting in the way, uh, but I have a newsletter which is essentially uh, about my travel, you know, explorations about different things. Um, so it's on Substack by the name of Amling Annie. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I do share stuff on my Instagram also, uh, like especially like, you know, my travel pictures and like experiences around that. Um, but mainly I'm currently kind of focusing on writing a book. It's a travel memoir mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I'm kind of, you know, spending most of my time. I do hope it would be out uh, next year, but let's see because, you know, the whole process is a longer process. So I'm currently uh, mainly writing that. Okay, wishing you all the best for your book and um, yeah, hopefully we do get to share that with um listeners as well so please keep us posted uh, so we can tag that to the show notes but we'll make sure to include your uh, newsletter as well as your instagram profile so that uh, people can certainly follow your work and uh, reach out to you if they have any questions about um, planning uh canal itinerary right so uh, thank you for sharing that information but um, any final thoughts on anya before we wrap up the episode Sure, sure. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun talking to you about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. The pleasure was all ours. And, yeah, and thank you so much for taking us to the this um, queen of queen of hills and uh, the gift of the forest, right? Like we refer to Kodai Canal as and showing us all the sights and the um, sights and scenes. And I'm sure if you go there, sounds as well. Uh, so we had a great time just exploring Kodai Canal with you and uh, also got a sense of how an extended itinerary for Kodai Canal can be planned. Thank you so much Ananya and we look forward to following your work in the future too. Sure, thank you so much. That was yet another great episode on the Musafir Stories. 
make sure to show us some love by sharing the podcast with your friends and family. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Musafir Stories. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or the website. Follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. Hey, hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcasts Network. On a century of stories, Kunal tells the story of the amazing comeback of the Indian boxing legend, Mary Combe. Find out why she's called Magnificent Mary and uncover her journey from setbacks to incredible victories. On The Habit Coach, Ashton Doctor tells us about the game-changing 7-minute scientific workout that revolutionized his approach to exercise. Discover how this easy-to-follow routine can seamlessly fit into your lifestyle. Folks, if you like our shows, spread the word, tell your friends and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. Follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. You'll also find all our shows on youtube.com slash IVM Podcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week. Omidyar Network India, IDFC First Bank and ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Thank you for making this possible.